Hello everybody, my name is Guillaume and welcome to a new episode of Head the Tone. guys, I hope you're all doing fantastic today and welcome to this new episode of Head the Tone on Tomans Guitars and Basses. If you're new here, what I do is take bits of legendary songs and try to give you all the tools you need to hit the tone. The cool thing about it is that you get to choose the next episode. Put it down in the comment section and I'll get to you as soon as I can. And while you're down there, since you're already here, why not liking the video and hitting the bell? That would be phenomenal. Thank you so very much in advance. And with that said, let's start with today's song, which is Sultans of Swing by Dire Straits. <laughs> I heard you. All right, I'm doing it. This is now. Diving back into Dire Straits and Mark Knopfler uh, with that song that is Sultans of Swing. I think it's fair to assume that he recorded that song with his Red Strat or at least A Strat. And the consensus among guitar players would be that he used the second position on the selector being the bridge pickup and the middle pickup at the same time. So going there and straight into the amp gives us that sound. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I think that already sounds pretty good. We're not quite there yet. Oh, and also I forgot to mention, I'm using obviously a Fender Strat for that song. This is mine, this is a 62 reissue. And with that said, let's jump onto the second part of the video, which is our amp and pedal setup. Now, as you may have seen, at this point, I am still using my Fender Hot Rod Deluxe Tweed Edition. The controls will be on your screen and there's not much going on there. It's just my usual clean pedal platform, which is very convenient in our current situation because Fender amps are what, as far as I could find out, at least, uh, Mark Knopfler used for that recording. Uh, was mention of Vibroluxes. I've seen some brown face, some silver face Fenders. Which one exactly, I couldn't possibly tell you. I'm sure you'll let me know in the comment section, but hopefully we're in that Fender ballpark, very American sounding, bright top end sort of amplifier. Now, I really like the sound of the guitar into the amp, but I think it is missing quite a bit, namely in compression. And I mean that I don't think that he, he had a compression pedal. At the time of recording, I think that compression came from the console, came from the studio, but it was fairly heavily compressed in my opinion. So I am going to be using the Ego Compressor by Wampler, which is my favorite compressor. We're not trying to like completely annihilate the spectrum and just squish everything together, but we are trying to make some of these nuances, some of these smaller pops and, and notes are basically even with the rest of the playing. So I'm gonna turn that on as well as the Strymon Flint for a little bit of reverb. Not sure about this one, maybe it was the amps reverb. I am going to use the pedal because I think it's a little bit more studio-like and, and refined. So 70s mode, pretty generous on everything, but a rather short decay. We don't want it to be like super ambient or anything. It still needs to be poppy and slappy. With that said, let's turn on these two pedals and this is where it takes us. <laughs> Again, Mark Knopfler is one of these guitar players where I can safely say that 75 to 99% of his sound comes from his fingers. I'm really happy with this sound. I'm going to stick with it and we're gonna go take a look at those fingers in the last part of that video, which as usual is the most important and is how to play the song. All right, obviously, if you've learned playing guitar with a pick, you can Ditch it. Not because this song can be played with a pick, I, I honestly think that it can, but this one tonally uh, will make all of the difference. Because of the compression, because of the clean tone, you could pull off the licks with a pick, absolutely, but the sound would be nowhere near what you get with McNuffler because it's not only finger picking, it's almost slapping. You almost have that slap and pop 
of the string, and that that's what gives that that lead part and and just Mark Knopfler's playing in general all of its Mark Knopflerness. Anyways, your guitar will be tuned in E standard for that song, and we're first going to have a look at that lead part that I started with, going with our fretting hand. <laughs> Nothing too crazy here, you just want to make sure that you articulate that lick as precisely as you can and, you know, it goes with anything Mark Knopfler really. There's a lot of precision into it because you are popping and slapping those strings so hard that there's, there's kind of, you know, room for mistakes and the compression is not only going to even out the noise that you want but also the noises that you do not want. So, you know, precision, I guess, is key in that kind of guitar playing. Uh, let's just have a look at the picking side of it. Okay, so that was for the lead part. And as I said, I'm not, I, I didn't try to overdo it there. I, I legitimately think that if you don't give everything that you have on that pop, of the string, it's not gonna sound right. Now, I'm not gonna teach you the entire song, the chord progression in itself is brilliant, is awesome, but it's just a major and a minor bar chord. There's not much to it, and I don't wanna spend the next half hour playing it slowly just to show these. I think you can go back to the intro of the video and just play it slower if you wanna make sure that you get the position on the fretboard right. We're going to have a closer look at the picking pattern that sort of recurrent throughout the, the, the verse, wherever you are on the fretting hand. So let's have a look at that. Obviously this is my way of playing it, so please do take it with a grain of salt. Depending on the live version that you're watching, Mark is going to, you know, scrape it this way or that way, or not use the pinky, or not use this one. I've seen so many different variations, I think that's what's great as well with that progression, is that because the chords are so, you know, you're locked in on that and you've got, you've got that train going and you have a little more room for expression in your uh, picking sign and I think that's really interesting as well. But with that said, I think that is it and you guys have all the tools you need to hit the tone on Sultans of Swing by Dire Straits. This was definitely not an easy one to pull off, mostly on the playing side. Yeah, I hope I did it some sort of justice. I hope you guys enjoyed that video and if so, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. Don't forget to let me know in the comments which song you'd like to see me do next. Please pick an easy one and I wish you all a fantastic week and I'll see you next Monday in a new episode of Hit The Tone.